Morning, everybody. I want to thank Molly Roberts and uh, Steve Cadwell for inviting me to speak to you today and share my work. Um, I'm proud to be a member of the AHMA. It's a great organization. Uh, I'd also like to say that I'm honored to share the podium today with Dr. Paul Cheney. Dr. Cheney is well known to me. His work is well known to me. He's done uh, some fascinating seminal work in the field of treating chronic fatigue syndrome. And, uh, and I think a lot of what I'm going to talk about this morning is going to really dovetail nicely with some of the information he provided to you about the disturbed uh, cellular metabolism and mitochondrial function. Because uh, that's what I'm going to talk about today is improving mitochondrial health and energy production. About my history, I started my medical career in 1987 in San Francisco at the peak, the height of the AIDS epidemic. Every second or third admission to the hospital was a young man who was gasping for breath from pneumocystis pneumonia, who was going blind due to CMV retinitis or toxoplasmosis, um, or covered with you know, purple sores all over their body uh, with progressive Kaposi sarcoma. And back in those days, there were no approved drugs to treat HIV infection. That, that's when I started, where and when I started my medical career. And even though chronic fatigue syndrome is not killing people right and left, it's still a very serious disease with no uh, approved drugs to treat it, no approved treatments. And it's, it's reminiscent of the way it felt back in uh, the late 80s when there were no drugs to treat this other horrible disease that affected the immune system. So that's the uh, environment that I, I started my work in. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about there was one really big problem in AIDS care that I uh, sought to solve because you could use micronutrients to solve it. And that led me, that gave me tremendous insight into uh, something that is now felt to be part of the cause and etiology of chronic fatigue syndrome. Um, and I also want to say that although the rest of my talk is going to focus on using targeted micronutrient therapy to help support and enhance mitochondrial functioning and energy production, that personally I don't believe that you know, just taking supplements or drugs or you know, anything in the form of pills is the end all when it comes to healing. So I also prescribe you know, that patients focus on healthy diet, the right movement activities, yoga, meditation, stress reduction, mind-body techniques, uh, everything that they can bring to bear to support the health uh, of their body. We're talking here about a disease that's, whose symptoms span multiple systems. You have nervous system with alertness and concentration and headaches. You have musculoskeletal system. You have, as Dr. Cheney showed, the heart and, and the liver. Uh, you have the immune system. And all of this is also affected uh, by the adrenal glands and the thyroid and the endocrine system. So uh, neuroendocrine, immune, GI, musculoskeletal. So if you have symptoms across all of these systems, there's got, in my opinion, there's got to be a deeper root cause, which is on the cellular level. And as you've heard uh, this morning, and, and you know, very well by Dr. Cheney, there's been a lot of evidence that the defect is in the mitochondrial's ability to make a proper level of energy. Now that would make sense because chronic fatigue syndrome is lack of energy. So there's, there's a common sense connection there. But there's been a lot of accumulating of the body of research showing that there are many defects in mitochondrial metabolism and mitochondrial morphology in patients with CFS. 
There, uh, there's been studies where they've taken muscle biopsies of CFS patients and normal controls and done uh, biochemical uh, markers and found that in those muscle biopsies, the level of reactive oxidative species of you know, byproducts of ox causing oxidative stress are elevated in the CFS patients. Dr. Cheney showed that when you do a magnetic resonance spectroscopy on the brains of patients with CFS, that there's an increase in lactate levels in the spinal fluid. And this is a byproduct of impaired oxidative metabolism. Uh, and it also, when you have these high levels of uh, oxidative stress in the brain, it causes vasoconstriction. So they're, they're starving their brain uh, inadvertently of blood flow and oxygen, which makes matters worse. And that's how the buildup of lactate gets, gets very high. And then there's a paper uh, that I'd just like to call your attention to by Sarah Myhill, Norman Booth, and John McLaren Howard, where they go into a very detailed, very well-described uh, description of mitochondrial metabolism and exactly how CFS can, uh, can impair the mitochondria's ability to make healthy energy. Uh, they do a very good job in describing that. But given the evidence of mitochondrial damage as a factor, the use of a CFS-specific nutrient supplement to target the mitochondria, reverse the oxidative stress, and support mitochondrial metabolism uh, and get it to be functioning healthier could really potentially help uh, this process at the root level and thereby helping patients have more energy and feel better. And so I devised a formula eventually uh, through a lot of trial and error with high dose acetyl carnitine balanced by high dose alpha lipoic acid and high dose N acetylcysteine. And I believe that this is a magic triad for the mitochondria. And at the same time as giving high doses of this triad of highly potent nutrients, I believe when you get the mitochondria to rev at a higher speed, you need to provide therapeutic dosages of all the micronutrients that are needed in cellular metabolism. B-complex, D, ascorbate, vitamin E, zinc, selenium, all of these are needed at higher levels uh, when you rev the mitochondria in this fashion. So these are the daily dosages that uh, I have settled on. Now, I did this work in 2000. I haven't changed this formula that I give my patients with immune deficiencies yet. So obviously something must be working if I'm not tinkering at all. Um, Acetyl carnitine, 500 milligrams twice a day. Alpha lipoic acid, 200 milligrams twice a day. And N-acetylcysteine, 600 milligrams twice a day, really appears to stimulate the mitochondria in a healthful way, combined with a couple of grams of vitamin C, a couple thousand units of vitamin D, 30 to 60 to 100 milligrams of B-complex. Um, I really think that when you embed these key nutrients in with a high-potency multivitamin, uh, you just balance everything out. Now, I got to test this formula, this exact formula. I got to test it in people with HIV disease as a mitochondrial antidote. I was very lucky because uh, the, the drug company that made the most mitochondrial toxic AIDS drug, Bristol-Myers Squibb, was hoping to help find some, something to take away this side effect. 
And so Bristol-Myers Squibb funded a double-blind placebo-controlled clinical trial in patients with mitochondrial toxicity, in AIDS patients. And this nutrient formula alone was found to significantly increase in 12 weeks, double-blind placebo-controlled, to boost the immune systems of AIDS patients by 24% in 12 weeks, compared to no change at all in the placebo group who were just taking dummy tablets. So these results were so significant that based on this, this trial, it got published in the Journal of AIDS. Now, given that patients with MECFS appear to have a mitochondrial defect and are, are short on energy, it seemed logical to me to try this mitochondrial support formula in my patients with CFS. It just seemed like, let's give this a try. And so I gave this formula to a lot of my chronic fatigue, to all of my chronic fatigue syndrome patients. And whereas some of them got better, got a lot better in a relatively short period of time, others had either no change or just stabilized, which sometimes is, is good enough, just stabilized, and a smaller percentage didn't respond at all. So I said to myself, maybe there's a way, maybe there's something I can add to this to enhance its effect, to get it to work even better. Eventually I found a, uh, a substance that I could add to this and have it work a lot better. And the substance is actually a currently available generic drug. When the two are co-administered together, there's a rapid improvement in the energy level of people with CFS, a rapid improvement in their alertness and their concentration and, and a uh, decline of brain fog. And when you give CFS patients more energy and better brain function, they become more functional. They, their activities improve, they may get back to work. And I found that when these two things were given together, there was this amazing synergy. So whereas caffeine work, in a low dose works very well combined with the nutrients, KPAX is trying to develop a by prescription version. And so these are data that uh, instead of caffeine as the stimulant, used low dose Ritalin as the stimulant. Five milligrams twice a day with the nutrients. And so as you see, within four weeks, uh, this fatigue score, which I don't have time to go into, it's called the CIS, declined from a high of 108 down to the normal range in just four weeks. And instead of bouncing back, these patients continue to get better. When you give chronic fatigue patients more healthy energy, they continue to get better, especially when you balance the, new, the stimulant with the proper amount of nutrients. And the same effect occurs on their alertness and their concentration disturbances. This occurs in the majority of people who take it. KPAX is currently planning a double-blind multi-center study uh, in New York, New Jersey, Salt Lake City, and San Francisco that we hope to enroll patients in the fall for. Uh, it's 120 patients. It's double-blind and placebo-controlled. And just in summary, to close, um, I found that these uh, are the three key antioxidant and mitochondrial support nutrients combined with uh, a multivitamin, multimineral that has all of the proper cofactors, that when you co-administer this with a low dose of a stimulant drug, something as simple as caffeine or even by prescription, if you get the balance right, you can get a profound single intervention positive benefit for your CFS patients.
Now, this is the best single intervention that I have found to make a difference. So with that, I want to thank you and I want to thank the organizers for your attention today.